الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين Islamic chaplain for several institutions throughout the state of Ohio for the ODRC uh, so we want to be with you today for a while and talk about al-Islam in general and personal, basically uh, relating to personal responsibility. And we want to begin by saying, uh, La ilaha illallah Muhammad rasulullah a'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan al-rajim, which means there is no God but Allah and Muhammad is his messenger and that I seek refuge with Allah against the enemy of human, the humankind, Satan. <clears throat> so Allah, He says in the He says in the Quran, He says, "Ya'ayha ladina amanu alaykum an fusukum, la yadurukum man dala ida taydatum, illa Allahu marjiriukum jamiyan, fa yud nabi." Ukum bima kuntum ta'lamun, which is translated, O you who believe, your own souls obligate you, or upon you are your souls. If you follow right guidance, no hurt can come to you from those who stray. The goal of you all is to Allah. He it is that will show you the truth of all that you do. And there's a hadith in support of this, this uh, ayah from the Quran where uh, Abdullah bin Umar, he mentioned that Allah's apostle, Allah's prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, surely every one of you is a guardian shepherd and responsible for his charges. The imam of the people is a guardian and is responsible for his subjects. A man is the guardian of his family, his household, and is responsible for his subjects. And a woman is the guardian of her husband's home and of his children and is responsible for them. And a slave of a man is a guardian of his master's property and is responsible for it. Or the servant of a man is the guardian of his master's property and responsible for it, depending on how you translate that. Because the slave is a word that some people don't like to use. But he goes on to say in this hadith, surely every one of you is a guardian shepherd and responsible for his charges. And this is related in Bukhari and Muslim. This verse has in it, uh, the verse we quoted from the Quran has in it the all-time classic statement, Ya ladina aminu, O you who believe. And here is a statement that is for all intent and purposes directly targeted at believers. And it says, it is on you to take charge, to take care, to guard yourself, your person, your soul. That it is up to you and it is your responsibility to protect yourself. Upon you, alaykum, that's what that word, alaykum, upon you is yourself, your person, or your soul, and fusukum. Alaykum and fusukum, ya'ayhaladina aminu, alaykum and fusukum. Upon you is the responsibility of your own soul. Although Allah created you and is the sustainer of all life, we call al qayyum the self-sustaining sustainer of all, Allah says that it is your burden or the burden is on you to manage your life and save yourself. Actually, it's natural. We already consciously and or inadvertently subscribe to this disposition. It is something we're told, but actually we already know we're responsible for ourselves. <clears throat> Alhamdulillah. So, the one thing, Al-Islam, is targeted at living. Uh, Marx says man, I'm talking about Karl Marx, is in an inverted world, meaning man is in of itself, is in of himself, an upside down, inside out world. What man could he be referring to? The man without enlightenment, 
the man without guidance. The suffering that Karl Marx is speaking of is in essence man's departure from the fitra Allah created. The fitra that Allah created is the life that Allah created, is the life that Allah created, that is. It is kufar to reject that life, and it is shaitan to openly, consciously reject that life and inspire others to reject it. It is upon that rejection that we find setting in or suffering as individuals and community. Al-Islam is targeted at living, and as we mentioned, it is called the natural life, and it is the natural expression of life that directs humanity via the individual to the life beyond the physical reality, while also creating or generating a path to a completion of all the aspects of the physical and material life we live on this earth. Allah says that everything will pass away except Allah. More specifically, he says, it says the waj, the wajhu of Allah, translated as the face or the person of Allah. We know this is metaphor since Allah is not human and has no face. More accurately, would perhaps be Allah's will. However, Allah, as we mentioned before, is the living, the one that is alive and the one that is the source of all life. The only one or the only one thing that can remain is that which is consistent with the will of Allah. Everything that is alive is naturally consistent with Allah's will. Death is only conceivable to man in his expression of life and his pending conclusion. Only a sentient being aware of his life has determined as seeing the conclusion of life. In other words, we have seen and have come to know death and desire to overcome death. Although hell, Jehannam, is mentioned in the Quran, hell is not the focus. Hell is the consequence of failure as a human being. Actually, more at failure of the human being as an individual to have faith in and accept the guidance of Allah, and in doing so, follows his own lower desires. Allah says, see if thou, one, as who takes for an object of worship their own vain desires, Allah has knowing them as such left them astray and sealed their hearings and their heart and understanding and put a cover on their sight. Who then will guide them after Allah has withdrawn guidance? Will you not then receive admonition? It is natural for all of us to desire living. So it should be our desire to live our lives according to the will of Allah, the source of all life. Life is ours to lose and it's ours to keep. If all is to pass away except that which is consistent with the will of Allah, our sentience, moreover, our common sense demands that we make Allah's will our will. Al-Islam, as we said, is targeted at living and for all intent and purposes, proper living. Alhamdulillah. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Ameen.